now. What do you want? I don't think you will be able to return to Isis anytime soon. General Vaklu has a great deal of power. Even a Jedi couldn't defeat an entire army alone. sentries and set up more perimeter sensors. I hope the Sith attack us again.
up to you, Jedi. This soldier knows the terrain. He can get us where we need to go quickly, without needing to blast our way through herds of Canucks. I'll guard your vessel, then. The path to the camp hasn't been patrolled recently. I have spent some time in the presence of your remote, and the upgrades you have performed on him are quite adequate. I am impressed with your work, though less so with your remote itself. What's wrong with my remote? I find his use of resources, energy spent on frivolous things, to be an unsightly waste. But it is obvious you have some skill, however slight, in the upgrading of machines. I want you to provide me with similar upgrades. I should be able to do something. I will see what I can do next time I have a free moment. So you fought against the Mandalorians in the war? I was part of the war effort, yes. I worked as a technician, though. But you fought on the front lines. To a Mandalorian, there is honor in that. I could do without your Mandalorian honor. I saw the results of your honor. The absolute destruction your warriors brought. And look at them now. Mandalorians are little better than mercenary thugs. And what's honor to someone like that? All they care about are credits. If I were you, I'd pick your words more carefully. You fought for no cause other than to spread suffering and pain to the people you conquered. Maybe that's what it looked like to you, but that isn't why we fought. We fought for honor, glory, in the heat of battle. You did nothing but murder innocents. The Republic took us too lightly. We wanted to face the full force of their army. We had to goad them to fight. That's exactly what I'm talking about. If you ask me, you Mandalorians just got what you deserved at Malachor. Defeat is part of a warrior's life. We will recover, stronger than before. Doesn't it even bother you that your people were almost destroyed? Or do lives have no meaning to you? People die in war. Well, I'm glad to have you guarding my back. Fine by me. Yeah, what do you want? Yes. Is there something you wish to do for me? befriended the seer. Her species does not see as we do. They perceive the galaxy through the Force, and it is how she found you. It is a rare gift squandered on her people. The Sith carry the battle to you, and you spare them. And as we travel, the empty places of this ship are filled. I hope your thoughts in this matter are clear. In saving her, you may destroy yourself, and do not mate with her. Whatever you may feel, whatever urges consume you, do not let them control you. Such a union would breed difficulties. We shall see. I trust your exile has taught you restraint and discipline in the ways of the flesh. Like the servant of Atris, this one has other masters. Though blind, she has ties to darkness. Her presence here is a threat to us, to you. Do not underestimate her or her loyalty.
Perhaps. I am not convinced. Because it was its time, perhaps you should ask her. It begs many questions. Her people are not prone to violence, war, or hatred, yet their planet is obliterated, scoured from the face of the galaxy, and all that remains is a Sith. You are right to trust your instincts. Something is wrong. It is only a matter of discovering what and why. If your instincts lead you to an answer, seek me out. Perhaps we will discuss more. Ask, and I will answer. He, if he can truly be called a man any longer, is one of the Dark Lords that pursues you. I do not think he knows what you are. Not yet. He spared the Miraluka, and that may have been the last shred of feeling that exists within him. Keep his slave close to you. I suspect there was a reason he spared her, and perhaps a reason that she survived when the rest of her people and the Jedi did not. One cannot have power of that magnitude that her master possesses and still think and perceive the universe as we do, as most of us do. I had hoped that you would not have to confront him, but her presence here has changed all that. You will have to meet him in battle. You must be prepared to sacrifice the Blinded One. Perhaps her death will buy you the time you need to deal with her master. Entertain what illusions you will, I am too tired to argue them with you. It is a technique that is almost as old as the Sith themselves. It is a means of severing connections between life, the Force, and feeding upon the death it causes. It cannot be taught. It can only be gained through instinct, through experiencing its effects firsthand. Yes, and he fed upon its destruction. It will sustain him for a time. Power? Do you think so? You would be wrong. There is no strength in the hunger he possesses, and the will behind his power is a primal thing, and it devours him as he devours others. His mere presence kills all around him, slowly feeding him. He is already dead. It is simply a question of how many he kills before he falls. Nothing is impossible with the Force. It is an energy that flows through all living things, and like energy, it may be harnessed, channeled, and consumed at times. It may even be a substance that can burn and ignite. Do not think of his power as one would a weapon, or one of your warships of the Republic. It is terrible, but it is still a subtle thing. The sect of assassins that chase you feed on the Force. What he does is simply the pinnacle of what they could achieve in time. And that is why they and their techniques must be wiped out. No one again must experience and learn what her master did. As much as one may use the Force to bolster the wills and strengths of others, the reverse is possible, though not often used. Instead of sending one's will through connections in the Force, instead such connections are drawn upon, fed upon, and drained completely. Then you understand how terrible such a power is, and why it must be ended. It is an empty road to the dark side, and by traveling it, the price is death before one's time. He is a breach in the Force, capable of consuming the lives of those around him. Sometimes the touch is slow, as it is with his crew. It is not something he can direct or focus, much like hunger itself. He is more of a hole in the Force than a living thing. Force sensitives and worlds rich in the Force draw him, the Miraluka world was one such place. That is why where the Jedi gather, Jedi will die. He will feel it, unless they mask their presence. But Qatar called out as a beacon to him, and he could not resist it. And he cares nothing for the Sith, or its teachings, or the Jedi. And when the Jedi are dead, he will feed on the galaxy, the Republic, and eventually consume the Sith as well. There is no future in the empty galaxy he sees. And that is why he must be stopped. The breach must be sealed before his power grows beyond what even we can hope to stop. 
One cannot have power of that magnitude that her master possesses and still think and... I had hoped that you would not have... You must be prepared to sacrifice. Perhaps he is bound to her, as I am bound to you. If so, there may be a death served by hers. You must be prepared to sacrifice the blinded one. Perhaps her death will buy you the time you need to deal with her master. Ask, and I will answer. She did nothing to your eyes that was not already there. She has forced this upon you, but such crude methods are the markings of the Sith. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Feel this ship around you. Listen to my words. Hear the sound of the handmaidens training in the cargo hold, her hands cutting the air. The welding of the droid as it goes about its work. Now, stretch out. Hear the rumble of hyperspace, the hum of the hyperdrive. The breathing of the blinded one as she meditates in the dark. Now, listen deeper, past her breathing, and listen. As my feet walk from the ashes of Qatar, I shall not fear, for in fear, Lies death, and... You are strong indeed. What you heard were surface thoughts only, but it is something that masters have trained for for years and never learned. That is not the real question you should ask. Is such listening enough to perceive the world around you? It is not. Because to listen to the thoughts of another is much like attempting to see the universe only with your eyes. It is equally limiting. Now leave me be. I must rest. There is nothing for us to discuss. Leave me alone. Yes, General. My life for yours. I will answer what I can. Something wrong? Talk. About what? Why, you trying to be my father? No thanks. Already had one. Somewhere. Are you sure you're a Jedi? That exile of yours must have gone on longer than I thought. Look, you're way too old for me. Even if I were interested, you couldn't handle me anyway. I mean, you're really good in a fight, and you've got those intense eyes. 
and it's obvious you take care of your body, but I really don't have the luxury of getting attached to you. Besides, you already have your little entourage. I don't want to be a part of the pack, you know? HK-47 activated. Running checks through primary systems. Assessment. It appears I have suffered considerable damage and dismemberment. I can feel all the cracks in my motivators. And my central control cluster seems to have taken several repeated blaster shots at close range. How crude. Answer. It seems you would know more than I. My memory centers are experiencing some setbacks. Reflection. Of course, for some reason, that does not alarm me. I suspect I have suffered such repeated memory failures before. Still, the loss of my higher combat and assassination protocols is shameful and degrading. Answer. If by okay, you mean the loss of almost all my existing assassination protocols, then no. I am not okay. Furthermore, I seem to have no discretionary control over my vocabulator, causing me to reveal my true function as an assassin droid of unrivaled sophistication. Answer. I do not know, Master. It is curious that I was here, although this place does seem familiar. Extrapolation. Perhaps someone was already in the process of rebuilding me. It may be I was needed for some task. Answer. Oh, that is impossible, Master. If I were out to kill you, we would not be speaking. And regardless, I am a unique model. Why to think that there would be other versions of me would be unacceptable. Statement. Master, I must inform you that your attempts at humor are wasted on a droid such as I. As I have expressed, I am unique. Resignation. Very well, Master. If you persist in your attempts at humor, I shall indulge you. Let me check the ship's records, and we will settle this matter once and for all. Conclusion. You speak the truth. This discovery is also causing me some degree of anger and humiliation. Mockery. Am I all right? Oh, yes, Master. Why, I am fine. Statement. I mean, I've only just been reactivated, only to find that there are substandard duplicates of me running all over the galaxy, corroding my good name. But if they are, in fact, hunting you, then I look forward to the opportunity to meet these units and educate them in proper assassination protocols. Conclusion. So it seems I need you for the time being. Recitation. Yes, as I said, I am an assassin droid. It is my primary function to burn holes through meat bags that you wish removed from the galaxy. Master, oh, how I hate that term. Answer. No, Master. Ah, uh, I said it again. Answer. Well, I am not certain I like the idea of a Master who feels reservations at having an assassination droid at their disposal. In fact, it brings with it a certain sense of dread that you may actually not use me to my full capabilities. Answer. Yes, Master. HK-47 is ready to serve. express some degree of irritation at your actions? Perhaps my anticipation of working with one who served at Malachor 5 was too high. 
but you are countering all those expectations. Statement. Well, all your behavior up to this point suggests either strong atonement or confirmation that the atrocities attributed to you during the war were, in fact, accidents. Statement. I suspected as much, Master. There are few who would discuss such things with an assassination droid, and that is perfectly understandable. I mean, what use is there for communication in a galaxy such as ours? Understanding might be achieved, or sympathies might be gained by such callous acts. You are right to remain silent about your past. I have seen the damage that repressing such things brings, and it is far preferable to share such traumas. Answer. Why? Because your actions then and now are related, and I feel I need some context. I confess to being somewhat needy that way. Statement. Sometimes, Master, it is difficult for meatbags to step back and gain some perspective on death and its importance in their insignificant lives. Explanation. You see, Master, assassination is such a versatile tool. I have seen the removal of a single target have far-reaching consequences for a nation, world, even a galaxy. The repercussions of even the smallest lives, whether dead or alive, can have profound implications on history. But surely you realize this. Statement. Why your own life, Master? Your single life changed the face of the galaxy, of history itself. Malachor V was an impressive act of destruction, but its impact on the lives of others in the galaxy was far more extreme. I mean, Master, you brought about the death of the Mandalorian race. I doubt they realize it yet, but you dealt them a blow from which they will never recover. Retort. Oh, Master, I am attempting to justify nothing, merely making an observation. Nothing would change the fact that I derive pleasure from ending the lives of others. I was only trying to bring death and its impact to your attention. Statement. Ah, uh, you wish to conduct an interrogation? Very well, proceed. Statement. Very well, Master. But if you wish to be brutal and vicious about it, know that I am trained for such things. Do your worst. Statement. Master, I am no behavior droid, but it is obvious to me that you have serious ethical problems that will need to be treated at some point. Very well. Ask your questions. If you feel the need to make it an interrogation, however, do not restrain yourself. I would be saddened if you held back. Statement. Ah, yes. Them. Very well. What did you wish to know? Answer. Master, I do not know. The location of the factory churning out these copies eludes me. And I do not know where they would have obtained schematics of my design. They are built from my template. Of that I know for certain. Answer. Because of my self-preservation program, my behavior core recognizes these templates as still being me, despite their individuality. I could no more shoot them than I could shoot myself. It is a frustrating situation that has been looping through my behavior core for some time. Statement. Ah, yes. Them. Very well. What did you wish to know? Statement. Master, there are two reasons for this. One, the probability of them showing up around you is statistically high. If I travel with you, then my chances of encountering these clones is also high. The second reason is a little more complicated. You see, even though those clones are obviously cheap, artless imitations of me, well, they are still me. Answer. Somehow these droids are built from my schematics. This causes certain complications. 
Answer, because of my self-preservation program, my behavior core recognizes these templates as still being me, despite their individuality. I could no more shoot them than I could shoot myself. It is a frustrating situation that has been looping through my behavior core for some time. Statement. Ah, more questions. Wonderful. Theory. Well, Master, I believe I was shot repeatedly. Once reduced to my component parts, I suspect pieces of me were sold across the galaxy. Statement. I am an extremely valuable piece of equipment after all, Master. My parts were no doubt costly to obtain, and their new owners hesitant to part with them. I would be most distressed if you were to shoot me, attack me, or dismember me in any way. I do not wish to repeat the experience. Statement. Ah, more questions. Answer. Many organic meatbags find that question difficult to answer, Master. But I believe I can provide you with a satisfactory definition. Definition. Love is making a shot to the knees of a target 120 kilometers away using an Aerotech sniper rifle with a tri-light scope. Statement. This definition, I am told, is subject to interpretation. Obviously, love is a matter of odds. Not many meatbags could make such a shot. And strangely enough, not many meatbags would derive love from it. Yet for me, love is knowing your target, putting them in your targeting reticle, and together achieving a singular purpose against statistically long odds. Something up. All right, what did you want to know? Well, there's a surprise. Trust me, she's a handful. All warriors are. They're not used to dealing with things they can't punch, kick, or break. Look, I know how it is. Me? There's no denying that I'm a good-looking guy. You have it worse. Because even though you might not be as good-looking as me, you have that whole tortured past, that command presence. Women want to save you. They think they can help you. All right, what did you want to know? <laughs> 